Thank you, Phil. Thank you for leading us this morning in these great songs. And they all remind us of how wonderful our God is. It's good to have Brother Anthony Berto with us this morning also. Uh, Anthony's been a good friend for a long, long time. And actually, when I first met Anthony, how old are you, Anthony? Well, I guess you were older, yeah, yeah. I understand what you mean, brother. Uh, I remember when Anthony had hair and he used head and, and he used head and shoulders, and now he just uses mop and glow. <laughs> now, but uh, anyway, we uh, we appreciate him being here this morning. <laughs> Phil's taking delight in the fact he still has hair, but uh, anyway. We, uh, we are glad that uh, they're here, and those of you that may have been with the band last night who are visiting with us this morning, we, we thank all of you for coming uh, as well. How many of you have ever said a certain things, they just don't make them the way they used to? You all made statements like that? You know, discipline is just choosing between what is now and what you want most. You can't always get what you want in life. What do you want most? Is it something that is short-lived or something that is eternal? If you were to ask the average person on the street of Palestine today, I could tell you they want what they want right now instead of even really considering the things that are eternal. Do you know that material things have an expiration date, but the Word of God does not? All of these things have expiration dates on them. You buy a gallon of milk. You'll notice right at the top there in little small letters that there is an expiration date on it. And it's not good beyond that. If you buy a loaf of bread, you will also find the same thing, expiration date. We bought something the other day at a supermarket here in Palestine. And uh, believe it or not, it was out of date for a month. I'm not going to tell you where we bought it. Medicine itself has an expiration date. You have to take it within the framework of when it was issued and when that medicine expires. Just out of curiosity this morning, how many of you are still driving your first car? I guess it expired, huh? How many of you still live in your first house? Nobody. Tony, we're going to take up a collection for you, honey. How many of you remember these clothes? When I first came to Palestine, I had a plaid coat almost just like that one up there. It's been 50 years ago. But how many of you still wear clothes like that? How many of you women still wear those clothes? Thank goodness. Hold on to those old clothes. They come back in style. How many of you are still sleeping on the old mattress you slept on when you first got married? That looks like ours, Audrey. (laughs) They all wear out. As a matter of fact, it wore out years ago. For the Bible teaches us that all things in life are temporary, are they not? If they're going well, enjoy them. They will not last forever. If they are going wrong, don't worry. They can't last for a long, long time either. 
You know, Jesus said one time, he talked about people that were having issues in life and the problems, and he would say that this too shall pass. Isn't it true? All of our worries, our anxieties, the things that we come to grips with every day are brief, but then they're over, and then they are gone. I will tell you freely, this morning I am interested in things that are eternal, the eternal rewards of heaven. And Jesus taught in the book of Revelation chapter 1 verse 8 and following, Behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me to give to every man according as his work shall be. Let's talk about some short-lived things in life. What are they? Believe it or not, happiness is one of them. How many of y'all are happy all the time? Nobody. Nobody's happy all the time. It comes and it goes. And it goes so quickly, doesn't it? When you think you're on cloud nine, then suddenly that happiness leaves your life. We want to be happy, and we want others to be happy. If you don't believe it, think about all the little trite statements that we make. We say at the beginning of the year, Happy New Year. We say happy Valentine, happy Mother's Day, happy Father's Day. By the way, next Sunday is Father's Day. Don't forget it. I said that for my children's sake. Happy Father's Day, happy 4th of July, happy birthday, happy anniversary, happy Halloween, happy Thanksgiving, happy holidays. Think about it. We want everybody to be happy, don't we? But... Is happiness a choice or is it not a choice? Happiness is a choice. And it really boils down to our own attitude in life. You know, I appreciate people that come along life's way. Uh, by the way, I thought about all that weather last night. People were not very happy about that. And I read the other day, believe it or not, that the inventor of the wind chill factor died recently. He was 82, but he felt like he was 84. <laughs> Happiness is an attitude. Happiness is not just putting on a fake smile. A lot of people do that all the time. They say, how are you doing? You know, what, you know what people say? Can we say it all together? What do people say when you say, how are you doing? Fine. fine. You got it down, don't you? You got it down. Are you doing fine? No. When you say you're doing fine and you're not fine, does that make you a hypocrite? We act cheerful and we pretend everything is sometimes okay, but it's not okay. And that is not. Okay, but what makes you happy? <laughs> you know, sometimes people try to catch up with the train of happiness only to find out it was the train of despair. Life is an endless series of train wrecks with only brief commercial-like breaks of happiness. There are times when we feel good and we're jovial and, and everything really is going all right, but then there are times when... They are not. You know, have you noticed that people are the ones who make you unhappy? Have you ever noticed that? One man said one time, he said, driving to the audience the other, uh, excuse me, uh, driving to the office the other day, I noticed a woman driving 65 miles an hour with her face next to the rearview mirror. Get that picture. You ever seen that? Putting on her eyeliner. I looked away, and the next thing you know, she was halfway in my lane, still putting on her makeup. As a man, I don't scare easily, but she scared me so much, I dropped my electric shaver, which knocked the donut out of my other hand, and in all of the confusion of trying to straighten out the car using my knees against the steering wheel, it knocked my cell phone away from my ear, which fell into my coffee between my legs, ruined the phone, soaked my trousers, and disconnected a very important call, all because of that crazy woman driver. <laughs> there are some people in life who destroy your happiness. 
In the book of 1 Corinthians 15 and 19, Paul says, If in this life only we have hope, we are of all men most miserable. You can be miserable or you can be happy. It, it boils down to the fact that it's your choice. Abraham Lincoln said many years ago that a man is about as happy as he makes up his mind to be. But our happiness, and here's where we're so disillusioned. We're disillusioned into believing that our happiness is based upon what happens in life. But in reality, we ought to be a people that rejoice in the Lord. There is a difference between joy and happiness. Happiness is based upon what happens in one sense. But joy is that which is based upon our God who is in heaven. We know that happiness is short-lived. That we fail to cherish it when it is within our grasp and value it only when it has vanished forever. Many of us live with regret. But happiness starts with you and God, not your relationship with your job or with your money. A lot of people say, well, I could be happy if I had all the money in the world. No, you wouldn't. If I had a different wife, I'd be happy. Or if I had a different husband. No, you wouldn't. You wouldn't be. It is our choice. To either have a short-lived happiness or an enduring happiness. Secondly, one of the things that are eternal is that relationship that you have with God. And one of the things that is just short-lived happiness is earthly treasures. You know, it's amazing, isn't it, how many things of the earth that we treasure you know people love everything Have you ever notice that I just love my car I just love my house I just love my new dress not me <laughs> now now people love all the material things of the world but believe it or not it will become a trash heap one day the things that you treasure right now will be on that trash heap. That's why the Bible in Colossians 3, 2 says to set your affections on things on that are not on this earth, but on things that are eternal in heaven. We need to set our sights on heaven. Where do you want to go when life is over here? You want to go to heaven? You must keep all earthly treasures out of your heart and let Christ be the treasure within your life and in your heart. Matter of fact, you have to let him have your heart, don't you? Christ in the Sermon on the Mount said it more profoundly than anyone. He said, don't store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroys and where thieves break through and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moth and rust do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. People worry about getting money, and then they worry about holding on to it, afraid that someone is going to take it away from them. God said unto him, the foolish man of Luke chapter 12, who thought that life was summed up and having all the things and the wealth of the world, his treasures. And God said unto him, but thou fool. It's the only time that God ever said to a man, you fool, but he did. He said, thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. And then who shall those things be that you have provided? The provisions of God are much, much greater, Luke 12 and verse 20. And by the way, if you're concerned this morning about where your treasure is, listen to what Christ says in Matthew 6, 20. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. So what do you treasure the most this morning in your life? 
All the things that we have will wear out. And I, I assure you, they don't make them like they used to. And in many cases, they don't make them as good as they used to. But in 1 John 2 and 15, John gives this admonition to the early church. He says, To love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. For if any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. You cannot honor God with your life and honor your treasures. Can't do it. Jesus says you'll either hate one and love the other, or you'll love one and then you will despise the other. It must be God first. Someone said to me one time, and I thought it was such a good quote, I share it with you this morning, that our calendars and our credit cards reveal what we worship in life. Bible treasures, they're so important. Brother Tiddled S. Tedley a number of years ago in our brotherhood wrote a book entitled, or a song entitled, Heaven Holds All to Me. He said, earth holds no treasures, but perish with using. However precious they be, yet there's a country to which I am going, and heaven holds all to me. Heaven holds all to me, brighter its glory will be, and joy without measure will be my treasure, for heaven holds all to me. Let me ask you a question this morning. You're storing up treasures in heaven? Where are you storing up treasures? Where is your treasure? I can tell you where your treasure is. If you let me see your heart. But where your heart is, that's where your treasure is. One of the things that are so temporal, and it brings temporal happiness, all right is this old world, this old world. How many of you are happy this morning? The rest of you and the most of you are unhappy about something. We try to hold on to the world. We try to embrace it. But we know it really doesn't bring us happiness for it fades away very quickly quickly doesn't it he says John does that is that the world passeth away why would we want to hold on to something that is passing away wouldn't you much rather hold on to something that that lasts you know when people go buy clothes sometimes they they want a garment that's going to hold up that's going to last don't you you go out and buy a junker of a car? No, you go out and you buy something that's going to last. You build a house. You want one that's going to be durable and one that will last for a long period of time, don't you? You don't buy, go out and buy milk or bread or medicine that has an expiration date on it tomorrow. You buy it way ahead of time to make sure that you'll be able to use it in a decent time frame. Peter said, the heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. And the earth also, now listen to this, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. That's why I'm telling you all the things that we have We'll be on a trash heap someday. You know why? The world is winding down. Scientists will tell you that the world is winding down. It is fading every day. But Jesus said to the disciples that heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. It is eternal. And if you really want a happiness and a joy that is eternal, hold on to God. Hold on to him. For heaven and earth shall pass away. And what he's talking about, when he talks about heaven, he's talking about the solar system as we know it. 
the heavens in which the birds fly. The heavens of our solar system. One thing that will bring you only temporal happiness is your earthly life. But it too will fade away. And one of these days it may not be written on your sarcophagus or your coffin. But you will have had an expiration date that you kept. Expired. Expired. You see, what you think and say today forms a foundation for all of your tomorrows. Sometimes what you're looking for comes when you're not looking for it at all. We're not promised another day of life. Anybody in here promised another day of life? I can tell you one thing for sure. You didn't hear that from God and you didn't read it in the Bible. For Solomon said, we know not what a day may bring forth. James says, your life is like a vapor that appeareth for a little time. James 4. And then it vanisheth away. You're not made to last here upon this earth. You can't hold on to time forever. It will pass you by. That's why the Bible says now is the accepted time. That today is the day of salvation. But think about it. You're just like that little cloud. And think about how quickly it dissipates. The storm clouds last night. I thought yesterday, I, you know, I kept hearing the uh, weatherman say, it's going to storm on Saturday night, and it was such a beautiful day yesterday, and I was looking at those clouds, and I thought, there's no way these clouds are going to get together. Not going to happen. I was inside the building and looked out, and I saw, boy, I'm telling you, it was black. <laughs> and I thought, boy, it's going to be a bad, bad storm. And the storm came, and the storm went away. And today we have a beautiful day. And you know what he says? That's the way your life is. It's like that little cloud that appears up there today, and just for a few moments, and then it's gone. So he says, what is your life? It is even as a vapor, appearing for a little time, and then vanishing away you know how long the bible says that we have normally upon this earth three times 20 you know what 20 is it's a score and he says in the book of psalms chapter 90 three score and 10 you know how many that is phil yeah Three score and ten. Seventy. My daddy used to tell me, he says, son, when you reach age 70 and then live beyond that, you're living on borrowed time. For the days of our years are three score and ten, and if by reason of strength they be four score years, yet there is strength, there is labor, there is sorrow, for it is soon cut off, and we fly away. It's amazing, isn't it? And it is appointed unto man once to die. And after death, the judgment. Hebrews 9 and verse 27. And the Bible says, as in Adam all die, but all are made alive in Christ. We sing that song that we sang earlier. This world is not my home. But sometimes I think we don't really think about the words of those songs. This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. For my treasures, not on this earth, my treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. My home is in heaven. 
and we're just traveling through. We're just here. We're pilgrims, as the song says. But he who does the will of God abides forever. Will they remember you when you're gone? Your name? Who you were? Do you know that after the third generation, it is said and it is stated, and I think it really is true basically, we're forgotten. Most people don't remember who their great, great grandfather was, but it's over. We're kind of like the words of First and Second Chronicles. All it says is, he lived and he died. Life is short-lived on this earth. What are you living for? What are you really living for? You can't go back and relive your life. You have to go forward, don't you? You've got to make an about face. And maybe there are those this morning in this audience who need to make an about face. And to give up the world and start living for God and things that are eternal. For Jesus said in Matthew 24 and 35 that heaven and earth will pass away, but my word shall not pass away. He said he is coming again to receive those who have placed their treasures in heaven. And I'll tell you that God's love is never thrown away. The one thing that is not temporary is the love of God. Maybe you're close to your final hour. You don't know how much longer you have. I don't either. But I know one thing. I don't want to gamble with my soul. It's not on the table. I want to make my calling and my election sure. The countdown has already started in your life. And what you do will determine where you will be when life is over here. We have to prepare for the things that are eternal. By hearing the word of God, Jesus taught and believing it. John 8, 24. And not just believing it, but confessing it to a lost and dying world. And repenting of our sins, Acts 17 and verse 30. And then by being baptized for the remission of our sins. That's how you make your calling and your election sure. You make your calling and election sure by living out what you promised God you would do. And that is you are faithful to him in all things. So as death draws near, one thing we want and we cannot have is time. Time. It's a precious commodity, isn't it? Later, you see, is now. Don't wait until it's too late. Some people do. I hope you would not let this service close if you're not right with your Maker. It's something we all ought to think about this morning. Eternal or temporal. That's a choice that we all make. There will be many chapters in your life. Many of you have already written a lot of chapters. But don't get lost in the one you're in right now. There may be some things that you'd like to edit. So we fix our eyes on things... That are unseen. For what is seen is temporary. But what is seen is eternal. What does your draft copy of life look like? What does it really look like? There's only one thing that will erase 
the pages that you want to blot out, and that's the blood of Christ. And by saying, take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to thee. Take my hands and let them move at the impulse of thy love, at the impulse of thy love. If we can help you get your attention on the right thing this morning by becoming a Christian, allow us to do that or to pray for you if you have strayed away from God and there's some pages you'd like to clean up Bill has selected a song that we're going to sing. Let us stand and let us sing.